Hey, what's cracking, guys? Ah, what an awesome day of the NBA playoffs. I mean, I don't know what superlatives you want to give to Luka Doncic after that performance today. That was uh, absolutely special. I mean, the fact that what Donovan Mitchell is about wrapping up to the Denver Nuggets right now is just only a few seconds left in this game isn't the top performance of the day. Uh, and that he was outdone by Luka Doncic. The NBA is in great hands right now, and I'm sure I am not the only one uh, who just enjoyed the game of basketball today and the opportunity to watch these young studs play the game that they're so great at. Uh, Jamal Murray out there looking fantastic in a losing effort, but giving us lots of money if you played him, according to what we talked about last night and this morning. Uh, just a really, really fun day of NBA. And that step back three by Luka to win the game, I mean, I cannot tell you how many Twitter messages and Facebook message I had on that thing going in because everybody was just impressed. Uh, that was something special, guys. This is fun. I love the NBA playoffs, and this was an absolute treat for a bunch of us today. So I uh, just wanted to get that out of the way before we actually talk about DFS. Hopefully you all did play Murray. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in the day personally because my core of Murray, Walker, and Tatum were were fantastic. But you know, when I went to the GP, GPP win yesterday, like when you get all the pieces right around it, things are nice, but... A bunch of blahs like the Royce O'Neals and the Tyler Johnsons of the world that really didn't do anything much or special. Uh, just kind of disappointed to get the core very nice like that and not have it come through for anything more than, you know, a basically a double up on the day. But again, never should cry. Never complain about, you know, doubling up on the day. It's just, you know, you get greedy when you have bigger nights than that before. You guys know how that goes. Anyway, all right, I'll stop rambling on. Let's get into today's picks. Before we do that, guys, check out Overlay. I am loving the Overlay slates. Uh, for tomorrow it, this set of games have been really good for me on overlay we'll dissect this one in the morning for y'all and hopefully we can get everybody in the money just missing these progressive jackpots obviously the contests aren't up right now so we can't go through it but the name of the website is overlaydfs.com i got a link to their twitter profile below uh we can't share links to websites because of youtube rules but go give them a little look see uh follow tomorrow when we do the video though because we had a lot of luck on this set of games, not as great on today's games for overlay, but the set of games we have for Monday have been very profitable so far. All right. Let's move into DK for the day. That's what you guys are here for. Click that thumbs up button if you guys don't mind. We're putting in a lot of work the last couple of days. Uh, that appre we appreciate that. That helps spread us around YouTube. Uh, helps get us a little money to live on and stuff like that. So... <sighs> I don't know, guys. I've been thinking about this one all day long. I don't know what I would have done. So I had my kids this weekend, and when the news that Doncic was playing and Porzingis was out, came out, like I didn't have any time to adjust. I don't even know what I would have done with that information. So um, I'll, I'll just live with what it is. What's nice for tomorrow is the only real pressing injury news is going to be Aaron Gordon, and it's in the first game. Uh, if I needed to make a gut call on this one, I don't think he's going to play. Um I mean, the Orlando Magic, no, they're not winning the chip. I mean, I'm sure if he's fine, he'll give it a go. But he hasn't played through the first three games. I'm just assuming he won't. Uh, but it is nice that we will know about this one early on. So stay tuned for that. Man, I, I put this on the beginning. I still can't get over what a game that was by Luka Doncic. That guy could barely walk. And to come out and ball like that and hit that step back three, man. For sports fans like me, you, and everybody listening, that was just such a treat. All right, guys, the NFL package is still 20% off. Up to the website, get the full season of NFL. Grab these day passes for both ba uh, basketball and for baseball on the same day. Um, Duggets are now officially done. Murray threw up the last second three for a few more points. That's it. That's all she wrote. Utah's up 3-1. This one ain't coming back, so uh, good for the Jazz. Uh, anyway, subscribe to the station. Thumbs up is appreciated. Uh, so what are we looking at on Monday? So I'm going to start my boy, DJ Augustine. I have played him in almost every lineup that I have set in the first three Magic games. So, you know, I've been discussing this a lot, and I, I don't like to, eh, I do like to brag, so who am I to talk and pretend like I don't? Uh, I, I think people miss the boat on NBA DFS playoffs a lot. And there's more intangibles. Uh, there's more, you know, best players, higher usage rates. You get less terrible, you know, less good punt plays and guys sitting out. And I think one of the things I like about DJ Augustine is when it comes down to it for the Orlando Magic, they are well coached. They are depleted talent right now without Aaron Gordon and Jonathan Isaac and, you know, Aminu. They're just in above their heads against a much better team. But I like the veterans and the adults in the room. And DJ Augustine is that adult in the room. 
you know, he's a man. Some of the guys that they have rolling out there, I would call them boys by comparison, not DJ Augustine. Uh, this is an overachiever, if you've ever seen one. Um, you know, look for them to pride up in game four. Uh, does it matter if Aaron Gordon plays for him? Yes and no. I prefer it if Aaron Gordon doesn't play because that's better for him having to take more shots. But I can't picture Aaron Gordon just like jumping in tomorrow, being 100% full go and taking this game over. So uh, maybe that's better for the match to be competitive. But I like DJ Augustine no matter what. I keep getting him every slate routinely below 20%. Uh, not a great game two, but he was excellent for us in games one and three. I prefer him over Markel Fultz. Um, this is where people start looking at the starters. Um, not for me. Give me DJ Augustine. He plays you know similar number of minutes. He's uh, in the playoffs like this. Give me a give me a prideful. I, again, I'll call him a man. This guy knows what he's doing. He's a wily veteran. I like him in a desperation shot. You know, shot like this. Look for him to have another game. He helps take this team over and kind of like keeps them fighting. I like, I like the cut of this gym. I know Matt and I say that a lot, but I like what DJ Augustine has to offer to us. So, um, point guard position's a little rich. And last time out, I used Goran Dragic, Malcolm Brogdon, and DJ Augustine. Not to give away the farm on the free video, um, but that's not impossible to think that happens again, especially since I'm bringing up two of the four. All right, moving from there. So Jeff Green of the Houston Rockets, guys. I'll be honest with you. Never in my wildest, wildest dreams. Uh, now I'm thinking of the song by the Moody Blues from back in the day, The Wildest Dreams. But never in, in a million years. Shit, man, you could have asked me this a week ago, a month ago, a year ago. I would never have thought I was going to be on YouTube talking about playing Jeff Green at 5,400 in a playoff game, of all things. So this is crazy to me. But I, I think this is one where you actively need to have watched the Houston OKC series so far to really be buying into Jeff Green. And I have. I've watched every minute of these three games, and I'm buying what Jeff Green is selling. He's playing monster minutes. He's playing some, quote, point forward and point center. And I think a key thing about this series is this kid, Dort, for OKC is amazing. The defense he is playing on James Harden, I mean, no disrespect to my boy Giannis, you know, Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Smart, any of the great you know, perimeter defenders in the game. I'm not sure anybody could do a better job than this Dort kid is doing. He's been really, really impressive. So what that's done is force guys like Eric Gordon and Jeff Green become a little bit more playmakers than they might be. James Harden can't front run and just get off easy step back threes like he can in a regular season game against the Phoenix Suns. It's just not capable. Now, Harden gets his points because, well, it's James Harden. He has the ball in his hand a ton. I actually think Harden was a detriment to his team in a way for Game 3. Now, you can't look at his stat line and say that. You also know darn well that James Harden's on the Houston Rockets. They're probably not even competitive in that game. So uh, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But what I mean by that, uh, in Game 3, I felt like Harden was frustrated, and he spent way too much time dribble, 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 dribble. And I know that's what he normally does because this dork kid was, you know, all over him, like stains on a mattress. And, I mean... Very, very impressed with this door kid. So why is that good? Because that's good for Eric Gordon. That's good for Jeff Green. You got a variety of other guys like your Austin Rivers. Um, but Green's been playing really, really well, shooting the three ball well. He's been outplaying P.J. Tucker, in my opinion. And with the complete lack of size that Houston has, they need Tucker and they need Green in there. So I, I, I can't say lock, 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 but I have been very impressed with Jeff Green, and he is – very much on my radar for tomorrow. There's a couple other centers I like as well that we'll talk about on members only. Uh, but you only got so much money, and Jeff Green is a pay down option right there. And I think his price tag will keep people away from him. Uh, I'm not sure everybody will be buying into it. And I get it if you don't want to be prisoner of the moment, because as I said when we started this one, I struggled that in my wildest dreams ever wanted to pay 5400 for Jeff freaking Green. It's with only center eligibility. He doesn't even give us the power forward eligibility. I never thought this was going to happen. As you can see, I'm a little bit flabbergasted and shocked right now. All right. Excuse me, no little drink of water. All right, next up. Let's go right back to the well on this one. So the last two videos have gone pretty well in the sense that uh, I pimped Jamal Murray real hard for today, and he was magnificent. Not Luca great, but very, very good. And the day before was Malcolm Brogdon. Look, these guys were in good spots. They made a lot of sense. 
just occasionally guys go off and you feel like you got a little lucky. I, I don't expect Malcolm Brogdon to replicate what you did last game. You know, but what do we know about this game? Indiana is a is a group of overachievers. There's just some good players on that team. But the fact that they're they're up there with, you know, the Phillies and the Bostons and the Milwaukee's and the Torontos, which is deeper with better players. I mean, tr- really, Indiana doesn't have a true star. I mean, Brogdon's good. Warren's good. Oladipo's good. Sabonis, Turner, these guys are all good. Uh, I like the cut of the jib for this team as well. And this goes to head coach Nate McMillan. So why is that important for Monday's games? Because there are certain teams that are down 3 nothing that you feel like could just roll out and die. That was my real concern with the Nets today and why I really only looked at Tyler Johnson. I don't think I touched TLC maybe once. Uh, Cause you were, you know, they're just, you know, Lavert was really good, but you could tell he was frustrated and just chucking it up there uh, because there just wasn't much for them to play for. Indiana's going to play for pride in my opinion. And they've been in every single one of these games and I'm sure they'll feel a lot better about their off season if they can get at least one. Uh, so that's why I like Brogdon again, even at his new and advanced price, we, we see the consistency that he's offered throughout the playoffs. You also know you've seen the ceiling now. Am I expecting him to hit that ceiling again on Monday? Absolutely not. If he does, great. But of course, we're not expecting him to hit that ceiling at all. I expect this game to be competitive for the same reasons that I liked Tatum and Kemba a lot today because I expected a competitive game. I I like Brogdon because it's going to be a close game and they're going to have the ball a lot. He's good. Uh, I was singing Malcolm Brogdon's praises when he played for the Bucs many, many years. I wish he was still on the Bucs. Uh, but this guy's going to have the ball in his hand a ton. He's going to have a monster usage rate. He can shoot threes. He's a good quality passer. He can get to the lane and dish to his teammates. That starting unit's going to be out there all game unless it's wildly lopsided, uh, and they need what he offers. He, right at this point right now, because of all the injuries, he's better than Oladipo in my opinion. So uh, I just don't picture them getting run out of the gym. I don't picture them quitting. I picture them fighting and playing hard. Whether they win or lose, I think we get 40 minutes of Brogdon with a monster usage rate. Even in a tough matchup like uh, Miami, we've seen what he can do. All right. Last up, speaking of my Milwaukee Bucks, I don't think I've mentioned uh, my boy Giannis at all in any one of these videos yet so far here. So, you know, what do I think about Giannis? You guys know I've definitely been hitting that mid-tier a lot harder the last couple days. So we got six days of NBA playoffs. Been a good run, but only four and two as far as profit goes, which I actually find to be a little disappointing. The two days I lost, I went a little bit too hard on the studs and duds. Fell victim to the thing I preach against, so I'm still mad at myself for that because I can only blame myself. Um, Giannis would be my stud of choice. Now, even if you go mid-tier, you can usually still afford one stud. Uh, and because the forward spots are weaker, uh, that does give you the potential to use Braun at small forward, AD at power forward or center, or Giannis at power forward. Quite frankly, if I'm like going for it in a GPP, just like I talked about with yesterday's GPP winner, I like the idea of LeBron because people aren't giving him the respect. Now, after another big game, that might change. Um, but I look for Giannis to be the most reliable for a variety of reasons. One, I could really picture the Lakers, you know, putting their foot down in this one defensively and offensively and winning this one, you know, big again, in which case LeBron at 100 years of age is more likely to get some rest uh, and also defer to his teammates. If his teammates are making shots, LeBron is cool deferring. Giannis is the younger guy who still wants to go after the rim. So Giannis has so many ways to score his points. Uh, he's been very reliable so far. The other thing is, having watched almost every Bucks game for many, many years now, we will let teams fight their way back in. And last game was a great example of it. They were up a lot on the Magic, let them back in, put the foot back down on the gas. Let them back in, put the foot back down on the gas, which is good for Giannis. They can't just pull him after 22 minutes. And also, if they pull him after 22 minutes, there's a good chance that Giannis went absolutely insane early on. So he's my most reliable stud. I'm not going to say that he's going to outscore AD and LeBron because I I feel those guys are, if you like them better, I can't sit here and make a lot of logical arguments against you. But if I only had to play one stud in the cash game, I would roll with the Greek freak because he, to me, is the most reliable. I like his floor the best. I got burnt by LeBron's floor the other day. I loved him. Lakers rolled. He had a terrible DFS game, just embarrassing bad for how much I was t- talking about how much I liked him that day. It really made me look stupid, uh, deservedly so. Uh, I look at Giannis for the consistency, and I feel very, very safe with him as a stud in my lineup. Also because he is forward eligible, not that we don't have a bunch of other forwards eligible. That's the other problem with Harden. Besides the fact that Dort is defending him like an absolute boss right now, 
Uh, he only has guard eligibility, and it's easier to find guards on this set of games than it is at forward. So that's what I like about Giannis. Uh, another thing with AD, you know, he's had some pretty good moments in this series so far. I think every one of you listening to this in your heart of heart knows that an AD stinker game is coming sometime soon. It doesn't mean it'll be tomorrow. I just think we know that it's going to come at some point. So every time you bet on AD, one of those 30-point games with him is going to show up eventually. So uh, that's what I got for Monday, guys. Uh, best of luck to everyone. Get that money in. Win some cash. Uh, grab those day passes or monthly memberships. Let's go win some money. Uh, before we get down to these smaller slates that are less profitable. NBA playoffs is where it's an easy time to make some cash, and I'd love to help you. All right, guys, have a great one.